do believe we are live. I'm going to check the official watch on my wrist. It is 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock Eastern. Yes. We are, there we go. We're here. Hey, good evening and welcome to tonight's show. Tonight, 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 we're going to be talking about, what's the topic again, Cubby? What to do in non-dancing weddings. Pretty much, yes. Entertaining at a wedding in which there is dancing is is frowned upon. And we'll talk more about that whole concept in, in just a little bit. Um, for a lot of you who follow our Monday night shows and such, we did not do much night shows last evening because it was an absolute beautiful day yesterday and i ended up spending the time with family dan spent some time with the family so we basically put things off and we're going to be picking up the show's topics from last night a couple will go this week and we'll move some to next week as we uh, as we go uh the one the big topic that we we're going to hit last night was about what type of business structure we're going to be doing that with jerry bizzotta tomorrow evening and that'll be at eight o'clock eastern so wednesday night eight o'clock eastern uh jerry and i are going to be talking about business structure, the sole proprietor, uh, S Corp, C Corp, uh, LLC, all the, the ins and outs with that coming from his uh, aspect or his perspective as a banker, because he works with these businesses and finds out which one's going to be working the best. And we'll do that tomorrow night at eight o'clock Eastern uh, on our DJ and TV show. Okay. Cubby, thank you for joining me tonight. Oh, it's great to be here, John. When, when kind of, this is something uh, you and I have been talking about uh, quite a bit, because basically we're getting so old that we can't go out and dance no no that wasn't it yeah no that wasn't it so as things are opening up um things are opening up in minnesota the north dakota all around the united states right now and of course this is this concept of djs getting back to work we talked a little bit about this last week in a couple of our shows we're having djs now who are actually getting out there and doing things and and one thing that we're finding that is either already out there in most markets or most states uh, a few states are like wide open, you know, hey, go ahead, do it, do your whatever. And if you're in one of those states, shut the video off now, because all you're going to do is get ticked off about what we're talking about. And you're going to put a comment down below, and then I'm going to ban you from our channel. So save both of us some time and leave now if your state is wide open and you can do events as as you want. For the rest of us, um, in Minnesota is where I'm going to be speaking, and Cubby's uh, based out of Iowa, so that's where he's going to be speaking about. Um, we are going to have to look at events that have changed dramatically, whether it's the number of guests are reduced or the numbers of, or, you know, how we're doing it more, out, they have wanting outdoor, indoor, whatever they're wanting. There's going to be some variables on this, but one of the big variables that we're seeing a lot is the no dance floor and no congregating of the guests. Cubby, when you hear that, what's your, what's your first thought as a DJ who's been in this for a long time and who really enjoys getting them out there on the dance floor? Uh, it's fearful, John. I mean, as well as a lot of my vendor friends uh, from the venue to photographers are all fearful of the backlash of um, the no dancing thing uh, because who wants to have a reception uh, when there's no dancing at all? It's a big celebration. You get everybody on the dance floor. You make the memories on the dance floor. But I believe there's other ways that we can make memories if the bride decides to continue to go forward with with the restrictions that are in place. And I've got some July brides that move for March weddings that they may not move a third time and may just have to deal with uh, the situation, the hand of their dealt. I think so. I, th I think that's going to be a, one of the big the big things is is uh, how that hand that they're dealt. And what what is kind of concerning to me, and I was talking to uh, uh, Michael Unstra, who's one of our writers here with the Disc Jockey News. Michael was talking about uh, talking to a few of his recent br uh, brides recently, and and talking about okay, these things may be in play. And it's interesting is is that they're like yeah, let's let's just we want to do what we want to do. Um, in some cases, they're going to be able to do that. Some cases, um, I, I think that they're going to be given a hand probably at the eleventh hour and say, oh by the way, you can't do this. Correct. Um, and. That was we were we were a release last week to do venues and the the proclamation lasted a whole week and then today uh, she came out with a new proclamation um, that extended it till June 25th and didn't rightly say uh, there's no dancing but the claim was there's no congregating on the dance floor of ten or more people where North Dakota said 10, 1075 no dancing Ohio said uh, 300 no dancing and I'm I'm not up with some of the other states but that's how our government our, our governor proclaimed. Uh, that we can do weddings at 50% capacity of the venue uh, and no congregation on the dance floor of 10 or more people. Now, and, and you mentioned the, the congregating on the dance floor, but um, a couple of the states that you've referred to, they're, they're basically, they don't want any congregation happening at the event. Clearly said no dancing. And and then there is the other part of no dancing. So we're, we're talking Correct. really um, multiple aspects that are, are working, that are giving us strikes against us. Um, 
some of the, the um, people are, are interpreting the, the no congregating as not going up to the bar and standing around the bar. That ideally, what their their ideal situation is, guests would arrive, they would go to their tables and sit down as a family unit. Once the uh, the meal and such is served, uh, buffet lines, for those who have been hearing this, buffet lines can happen. It's just that if you and you go up to the line, you aren't going to be the one touching the ladle. You're going to be holding your plate and saying, you know, please, sir, can I have some more? That kind of thing. Um, I don't know how many people will get that reference, but I'm going to let that <laughs> Can I have another, please? Um, so that, that's going to be, there's going to be some changing, uh, some tremendous changing there. And I, I even wonder, Cubby, as we're, as we look at some of the things we can do, how many things in our non-dancing way of entertaining are we going to be getting to where we're kind of pushing that envelope just a little bit on that congregating? And could there potentially be somebody who would be like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that type of thing? I, I, that's, a, that's definitely a concern. Oh, it's a huge fear. And a lot of the venues fears as well is, is, is that uh, we love it and we hate it. It's a love hate relationship with social media. Let somebody, you know, post on social media. They were at such and such X, Y, Z venue um, with ABC DJ and somebody caught the COVID. And then next you, then they're feel is their liability there, even though, you know, they, they went, they drank the beer, they got, you know, they got drunk, they danced, they, they didn't social distance. Like we continue to make announcements all evening long, you know, you know, that's, that was my, that's our goal is to continue to announce, ladies and gentlemen, please practice social distancing. Are we at the bar, whether you're at the buffet, you know, as yep. you dismiss tables and things, but if they don't listen, they don't listen. And then who's liable for that? They don't listen. And it was in, in tonight on the news, uh, I was watching the local Minneapolis news and they were talking about Hudson bars, Hudson, Wisconsin, which is right across the border. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, right across from Minne the Minneapolis area, the metro area, Hudson's there. Last Saturday or over the weekend, they figured that they had 85% of their audience was Minnesota and they were packed Friday, Saturday and, and Sunday uh, there. But they were saying the biggest problem they were having is they could not control the crowd at all. They wanted to have social distancing. They wanted it to be a safe place for people to be. And once they had, you know, once they were in the door, it was uh, all that was gone. And they, the owner was concerned enough where they'd shut the place down early. <laughs> They're like, okay, everybody out, we're, we're done. Which is, yep. I mean, it's it's a, a concern because that owner is is realizing that their venues have a responsibility implied or otherwise that we've not, they probably haven't had, you know, at that level. Obviously, they've been responsible for over serving and things such as that. But Great. now <laughs> they have to worry about this. Oh, yeah. And like I said, the backlash of social media, and we've all seen it, you know, good and bad reviews, how it can affect us. And so um, we had a bar, same thing, just like in Hudson. Uh, they opened up 50%. There, somebody reported them, and then the newspaper picked it up, and all, you know, all the stations. And it just turned into uh, just craziness, just craziness. It's and something that, that I don't want to deal with as far as a business owner uh, trying to tarnish my name as, as you build your reputation. And, and we have a, a, a DJ who owns a venue that's in there, uh, uh, Sapphire. Thank you for being with us uh, tonight. Talking about that, that the as a person who owns the venue, they're going to be held responsible. And and one of the things I'm envisioning with this is, is that kind of like the drinks on the dance floor or no glass on the dance floor. I mean, the number of times we've had a, a catering manager or a bar owner come up and say, hey, can you make an announcement? I don't want any drinks on my dance floor or no glass bottles, whatever it is. And we have to be the, okay, everybody, <laughs> take your drinks back to your tables. I'll wait. You know, <laughs> we have to become the bad guy. And this is gonna be a situation, I think, where the venues are going to be, they need to be able to do these things and control these things. Well, we've got the microphone. Either they, we hand them the microphone and they become the bad guy, or are we gonna to have to become the bad guy? Right, and then you wanna go back, your, your vendor relationship, you always wanna go back to that venue. And I've had actually DJ friends tell me that, oh, we can get around that no dancing. No, if you want to go back to that venue and that venue has that strict rule, then you can't not listen to what they say. Exactly. Um, and, you, you know, and the photographer will be there and be able to see it. So you don't want to ruin your relationship within your community um, by, not, you know, by not following what the venue wants. Not, not because we want it, you know, uh, but what the venue you're requesting. Because every proclamation here in the state of Iowa is – the venue must, the venue must see that this happens. The venue must see that this happens. It's not the DJ must see that this happens. It's not the photographer, it's the venue. venue. So everything really relies on the venue. And that's that's gonna be the uh, the the tough thing is, is uh, we don't wanna be the party pooper, but we have the microphone. We don't yep. wanna offend the venue, 
because we probably are hired by someone else. How do we do we balance all of these all these things? So I know, gang, right now we're giving you a lot of questions, but we're trying to put things in kind of context of why. Because a lot of times we'll have people who watch the, these videos and they're like, well, it does, it's not this way in my market. It isn't in all markets this way. And I, I'll give you that. Some markets are going to have completely different rules than what we have here. North Dakota has a completely different system going on than what we're having in Minnesota as of right now because we have a much higher rate and we're still growing daily with the number of people in the ICU beds, which is the important number to be looking at. All the other numbers are just numbers that sound bad or whatever they are, but there's some important ones to go by. That's the one and we, we're growing. So there's, I mean, it just, it's going to happen. We know this, how that falls down into when it comes to the venue managers. Um, another bar locally here, we were talking to, uh, talking to, as we're trying to figure out what's going to be in the best interest for our local economy because of our newspaper, you know, it's like, okay, how do we encourage local people to do business, to help our local businesses right now? And the um, one local venue who's, who does food and he does alcohol, he's like, you know, you, ideally you'd want us to say, have them come in and, and do orders uh, or as far as to come in and do our patio food because on June 1st, we can have food on the patio. But he said, if, pe if we tell people to do that, they may stop doing the takeout. And if they stop doing the takeout, there aren't enough seats on our patio and we all of a sudden, we've been going backwards slowly. Now we're going to go backwards faster. So there's just a lot of different things that are going on uh, within this. And that's why we want to make sure we get this part out of the way so we can go to the brainstorming idea of how we can try to make things um, make things work. Um, somebody had asked about if this was a law. Or there, these are basically, um, these are... are um, not official laws that are being handed down. These are guidelines from the state. Guidelines from the state can be enforced. Um, we found this out with a local bar, a series of bars here in Minnesota. The owner wanted to open up. He's got a ton of money behind him from a, Go, a GoFundMe account. He's got about $225,000 for legal fees if he wanted to fight it. But ultimately, when the state says to, to not do it, and there's a liquor license involved, you have to go to the state to get a liquor license and that changes the game completely. It doesn't matter if it's a law or not, um, you're gonna have to, you follow the state or you're going to be out of business. Just there's the, the uh, different things. So um, one thing somebody mentioned also, Cubby, is, uh, is people moving their events out to the farm or out to uh, private property. Have you guys, have you started to hear some of that? Uh... I've got one June the 6th at a private property with 80 people. Um... Uh, I asked the bride about her nervousness on COVID and, and uh, social distancing, and they do want to have a dance. And um, granted, it's only 80 people, so I believe people can social distance. Um, I would, uh, as everybody says, know your client. Mm -hmm. um, I am, like I say, I'm doing a, a small affair on June 6th at a private property. Um, they're serving their own alcohol, so they don't have to worry about liquor license. Uh, I will, I will wear a mask when I'm not announcing just to be safe or as I'm dismissing the tables to the buffet or, or whatever. If I get close, you know, I'll make sure that I, I wear, I, I wear and I sanitize and uh, things of that nature. But, um, yeah, the private events, you, you, you just have to, you have to decide on your, on your own business model, whether, whether it's worth it to you, um, to make your client happy. Yeah, and and that that's that's a big one, uh, a really big one because um, one event that uh, a private event or event that's been moved off to a private place, um, they've got family coming in. Ironically, they've got a, a group from New York coming in. They've got a group from LA coming in, and it, it becomes a system. There's that part of me in the back of my head that's like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, it, that's the first thing. Is like, you know, it, they've been through those areas, or I should say, in California, it's it's growing there, but there's that uneasiness that's going to be part of it and that's us we're paid to be there what about some of the others that aren't aren't as as uh, healthy so so we have the events the state has has tightened things up and they've said no congregating no dancing and and of course then some people were kind of spreading around the idea that djs can't be there djs can be there we can do m music so that for those of you who've heard that or your clients call and say oh i'm sorry we need to cancel because we've been told we can't have a dj the venue could say that, that we're not going to allow a DJ. That is certainly possible. And that would be something you'd have, they'd have to take up with their venue. But it isn't a law anywhere that we have been able to find so far that you cannot have a DJ. It's the dancing and the congregating, a dance floor congregating, what have you. Cubby, the bride says comes to you and she says, hey, I can't do this and I can't do that, but gosh, I wanna make this kind of fun. What can we do? Well, I think everybody has uh, got their tool toolbox of different things they can do. 
Um, starting off really easy that everybody does is a shoe wed game. I call it the shoe wed game, the shoe game. Um, you know, you could you could kind of drag that out a little bit longer. Um, I use black and white flip flops, uh, so they're actually not off taking their shoes. Um, there are other things like uh, words of wisdom. Uh, you know, prior to your guest arrival, you put three by five cards on every table, and you were asked for words of advice uh, for the bride and groom. Um, I use those as segues into first dances, and then I read the words of wisdom to the bride and groom, and I'll say, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have them on the dance floor. Let's keep them out of the song they chose this evening. Um, and then I said, but I, only do, I usually do one or the other. I'd either do the shoe game or I'd do the words of wisdom. I would never do both. Mm -hmm. In this particular instance, we may have to do both. Um, other, one, other ideas I thought of is what's your favorite memory of the bride and groom? It could be um, either together as a couple or maybe it's the groom's aunt when she remembered when he was seven years old and he ran through the sprinkler uh, without any swim trunks on, you know, kind of chuckle, chuckle. Um, okay, you know, let, me, let me take that one. I'm going to take that. I'm going to do what Randy Bartlett on that and take it 1% farther. Oh. So so you have the, you, you hand out the papers so they, can, so they can write out a favorite memory. And on there, they have to write the, how they're connected to that. That part yep. of that you don't read. So then what the, the game becomes is the bride and groom guessing who who's this whose memory it is so you know okay so this memory is of uh you know fred our groom tonight uh fred this is when you went running down the street buck naked singing that uh you know i'm i'm you know i need some tp for my bunghole you know who whose memory of you is this and then you know with having it so that they that they have to guess or you know it's a a, a memory of the groom and you know that wedding party whatever you can have some fun with it and take that we had, we did that on on a couple of weddings where we had them try to guess a uh, a, a, a it was actually a um, it wasn't a memory it was a a quote from because everybody he was one of these guys who had had a saying for everything and that's <laughs> right? what they they did is they create they gathered all the quotes or their his sayings and then it was who do you think and then he was guessing it's because he was really good at knowing who he did used quotes around it was it was interesting. That's so, amazing. I, I'd never thought of that idea. Is guessing who? That's a great. That's a great twist. That's a great one percent. So anyway, sorry to interrupt you, but I, that was a. I think it could be a fun activity. Oh, I think like I said, you could also do um, getting. We do a lot of trivia locally, so you can maybe do bride and groom trivia. Mm -hmm. Simple questions about the bride and groom, where they went to school at, what they you know. And uh, sometimes we dismiss tables by that. Um, if they get the question right, they get to go to dinner next. Um, once again, there's a little bit more interaction. Uh, with with the crowd and uh, simple questions. If you got ten tables, you maybe do it eight questions because you never make the reserve tables play. Um, mm -hmm. Mom and dad who paid for it don't need to you know <laughs> have, have to win to play to go eat dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, I think bride and groom. And if, once again, if you're into the game aspect of it and try to keep guests there longer, uh, maybe bride and groom bingo, sure, uh, musical bingo. Uh, there's several different services that do that. I know uh, DJ Trivia has portion of it. Um, I know DJ games has a portion of it. There's other, there's other maybe free versions of it. Get the bride and groom's either favorite genre of music or some, some favorite songs and maybe play bride and groom bingo, um, with that. Uh, if you've never, you could do a Mark Farrell love story. Um, and, and I want to preference that by saying, if you've never taken a Mark Farrell class, maybe you don't try to strike out <laughs> on your own and do it by yourself. Um, cause there is, um, a key to, to doing it and, uh, you definitely want to do it right. Um, Peter Mary's, uh, personalized grand intros are amazing. Once again, if you've never taken a Peter Mary course, um, or seen how to do it, um, make sure you reach out to Peter or Mark and, and take their course. Bill Herman's got some great stuff on Ruth. Um, all great stuff. Cause I think our MC skills are gonna have to come out. Uh, no longer do you have to worry about mixing and, uh, which is very, very important in dancing and keeping the, the dance floor, uh, popping. But when you don't have a dance floor, You've got to come up with unique ideas. And that's where MC comes in. I think so. I think the MC part of it. Um, somebody had asked about if we're going to be just doing games the whole time. I don't. I don't foresee that because this is. It's not about us. And sometimes if we're doing game after game after game, we become that the Chuck Woolery of. Oh, did I age myself there? I yeah, think I did. a little bit. I think I did. Um, we kind of we become that um, that person up there, and we don't want to be that 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 center of attention. Um, there's a lot of cool games we can do, and using one or two here or there. Uh, can can definitely help to make that a uh, unique and fun moment, but it's not going to be games all night. Um, the couple, there's a a uh, a version of the trivia because one of the things I, I get frustrated with when we have done the the couple trivia is that there we have questions that should be fairly easy, and so you've got guests who kind of know them, or they only know one. Um, so 
what uh, what I, I was using on a couple of occasions is uh, who is most likely to. And basically, it's a version of the shoe game, but it's something that can now be opened up for everybody. And we can, you know, go to a table and it's like, okay, so who would most likely do this? And they can they can choose. Would it be him or her? Uh, the the again, I like quotes when people there's pe phrases that people use a lot. Who is most likely to say this? Da 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 da. -da. Yep. And it's it gets to be kind of funny and and uh, having some you know people get a chuckle and and it's personalized to the the couple. So. Um, that, for some reason, uh, Chrome just crashed on me completely. Thankfully, it's not part of <laughs> our streaming, but <laughs> I've not had that. Um, okay, so let's, let's let's talk a little bit before we get into uh, maybe how to enhance some of the formalities. Um, Jonathan asked, uh, the brides are, how are the, the couples going to feel about this? And I think this cubby goes back to that 11th hour thing that we were talking about earlier, that dealing that bad hand. Yeah, I've got a June twenty seventh bride who is just a stage three clinger, hasn't moved just yet. Um, and if she continues, she does have a backup plan. And I believe that if if uh, this go, continues to go on, then she's just going to have to realize this is her day. Um, this is this is the way. So then, that's where we as entertainers can and DJs can kind of go. Well, how do you how do you see it? Because we can't, you know we they're li they're limiting our dancing. Um, they're doing this and. So what do you what do you want what do you want to do your day to look like? And then we can kind of once we once we listen to them and find out well I want to do this I want to do that then that can lead into us giving the, these ideas as to well we can do this and we can do that and what you know what do you think about this and we can do you know do cake in the middle and uh, type of a thing. So I guess listen to your bride especially if they have no backup plan as we talked about the eleventh hour and then and then be there ready to suggest. As, as an entertainer and a professional, what we should move on with. Because I think when we, this is probably going to be the year that we're going to have to be in touch with venues at a level we've never been in touch before. And it might be that we're in touch with a venue. Uh, let's look at the situation in Iowa. Uh, was it a week ago there was a proclamation made? And then yep. another one today that uh, would also affect? So here we are less than a week apart, really. And we've had two different, uh, not two different, but two defining proclamations made. And I think that's what's going to happen as we go forward, as as we have the ebb and flow of the whole situation. So we're going to have to talk to the venue and say, okay, um, we've got the the uh, you know the Johnson weddings coming up this uh, this Saturday. Uh, what what do I need to to know as far as you know what kind of things are you wanting to not have happen? What can happen from your perspective? Because we almost are going to be, <laughs> as much as I, I, I hate planning that last minute thing, I think there's going to be a lot of weddings that are going to change from Monday to Saturday. Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we've got to be able to to pivot on a dime um, and, and change the whole aspect of a reception because of what, like I said, the hand we were dealt. Yeah. And how are the couples going to feel about that? I think they're going. there's going to be some who will be in complete denial. And, and they're going to be like, you know, I'm going to do it my way. And then what happens is that our friends like uh, DJ Sapphire, who has a venue, have to be the bad guy. And and that's that's going to be a tough call. You know, I just I call Sapphire and say, hey, uh, what what can we do? Sapphire says, you know what, we can only do X, Y, and Z. And and it's like, okay, uh, uh, Susie Bride, I um, let's let's kind of put things together. There's been a few changes, uh, a couple of things that we were planning to do. I just the venue said that they would rather us not be doing that kind of stuff. Um, what? should we look at doing and if she's like no we're going to do it exactly the way you know how, how, how do we respond you know how do oh, we, i don't know about I, that one if she if she keeps driving forward and and uh, sapphire is like no you know we got to do it this way or the venue i golly yeah you know, I, I, i'm not looking forward to that and yeah. i guess i i haven't had to in the past you know this is all new to everybody yeah. So, so again, a lot of, a lot of things that you guys are probably going to be running into, not everybody, but some of us might be running into as we go forward. Um, so there's a lot of games and activities. Let's, let's look at, um, taking your, your trip traditional or your more, your common introduction to the wedding party. Kevin, how do you typically do that? And is there going to be a part of your introductions that are going to need to change? As I was looking at this, I think there, I've got a couple of pieces that I do that I'm going to, I won't be able to do. Right. Well, we in the past. Well, yeah, because you can't. Well, you know, do you bring them in as couples or do you bring in singles? And, and I think I, if you do the single grand intro, um, I've I, in the past, I, I have always done this. Sometimes I just say name being escorted by or, you know, yeah, um, the, the name and then the, the pump up. Um, but maybe they give us three lines of somebody 
you know, John Young, he, you know, he works at the Shockey News and something kind of funny about mm-hmm. him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Griezmann, John Young. And then John comes through the thing and the next person comes through. Um, so maybe more personalized grand intros, um, two or three lines about him, ending with something kind of, you know, they knew they met in college. She currently works or is married and got two kids, you know, whatever the situation may be with mm-hmm. that groom, bridesman or groomsman. Um, maybe something humorous. His nickname is Big Sexy or, or whatever it is. And then ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Young. And then you kind of come through the door. Yeah, I think that the the introductions are going to have to have to change a little bit because one of the things that I have I have done at during the introductions, I've had people get up and you know you know crowd crowd the aisle to make make a, a, a make it seem like you know the paparazzi type of an intro. Yeah, we've done tunnels before where they're going yeah. through the tunnel high fiving. Yep, and those are obviously you know having no concept of social distancing involved <laughs> with that at all. Um, so our introduction, that that kind of stuff is going to change. Um, bringing people in ones and two at a time. I'm actually envisioning when, didn't you say something about tables? The recommend, recommendation for tables was suggested? So in Iowa, the tables went from six to 10, but they still have to be six feet apart. So um, that gives you a lot of runway, a lot of walkway to walk through. You know, sometimes all the tables are smushed in there. Mm-hmm. You know, you get into reception all, you know, you're loading in, you're like, crap, how do I get my cart through here? Um, now, because there, there has to be six feet distance between every table, it gives you a lot of room, it gives you a lot of room. So we, we've got 10 people uh, in Iowa, 10 people yep. at a table, bride and groom. So that means we have a much, we probably have a much smaller wedding party than, than a lot of the weddings that, uh, that we go to, or we've done. I mean, I've had, we've had those weddings where there's been 10 on each side plus. The, oh yeah. So obviously that's going to be a little bit. Of, of a of a difference um one thing that i i like to, uh, to do with the introduction is we bring them in and we have the wedding party form a half circle on the dance floor and do their first dance right away and you have that really kind of cool f- uh, moment for them to take pictures i would guess that's going to be dr- crossing that line for congregating especially on my dance floor um so that could be that could be a, a definitely a problem um, the the high fiving is you know, there's so many so many variables and and granted they're probably not going to get in trouble for it but the venue has to be responsible for everything that happens in that room and if something bad happens down the road it's going to become up to some of these venues of what their their uh, risk tolerance is going to be it's not so so much us as what we are willing to risk as much as the venue um, I think so, coming out the gate they're going to be a lot tighter than than six weddings down the road. You know what I'm saying? Because in six weeks, things could change as well. Uh, exactly. uh, totally different. Yeah. It could be, you know, much looser as things haven't, or it could be even, even tighter yet. Or that my biggest concern and fear is that, that we open up and, and things happen and then they have to lock some things down. There was one, one, um, uh, uh a uh, viral virologist here in Minnesota who said that he could see it that later in the summer that there will be some counties that will have events and some counties that will not have events just because you get an isolated uh, a cluster of cases and they just can't do things safely in that area and oh my goodness you know talk about a kiss of death for oh. for some areas you lose you lose a, a month of uh, you know late summer month of of uh, income you know any month is tough but for in our vacation October? land. October? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You lose that and you, you, it's it's deadly. Um, do you think the weddings will be cut? Uh, Jonathan, a question. Do you think wedding times will be cut? I, I really think they will be, um, especially at, at venues, because they're not going to be able to push the alcohol as heavily as they would like to, because intoxicated people make poor decisions. And again, the venue has to police those poor decisions once they get to that point. I think they will have uh, guests when there's no dance floor. Yes. Um, if you guys got a chance to check out, there was a, a, a DJ, and I can't remember what, is it DJ Chaos? Um, a gentleman from uh, Nebraska who did a wedding in Iowa last Friday. A great little video, if you guys can. Jesse Swanson. Who's that? Jesse Swanson. Jesse Swanson. Adam, Jesse Swanson out of Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, thank you. Jesse. Great uh, guy. Great video. Uh, uh, Jesse, that was that was a great video you, you did. Explain what happened. And what uh, the venue was not supposed to have a dance floor. They didn't, but the guests moved everything off the floor and they guests made the dance floor and the guests danced and, and everything. It, they treated the wedding as if nothing was the, nothing had gone on. The only time Jesse really saw anything that spoke to beyond his preparedness was the catering staff that did their things and were, were doing things very well to protect the guests. Otherwise the guests didn't. Now that's all fine and good, but that venue 
is responsible for and could be. Um, and, and again, I, I mentioned this on a few other shows. Most of our liability insurance for those of us who have business insurance on for on-site visits, like we have it for our newspapers here, for people who come in and if they would get hurt, you know, my dog bites them or something, my homeowners won't cover them because they came in for business needs. We have to have business insurance. Our business insurance has notified us that they will not cover any COVID-related lawsuits. If somebody comes in here and uh, gets catches COVID because they are um, here uh, and, and touching things, that's on us because we should either, if we can't keep things clean enough, we need to lock the doors. Not all insurances have probably done that, but I'm thinking venues are seeing uh, seeing a similar thing. Uh, another person mentioned uh, Facebook, and some I can see some people's names on Facebook and some people I can't. It just shows up as Facebook user, so I apologize ah. um, that if venue, the venue says no, um, and, the, and we're, we're talking to the bride and the two are not jiving, um, that they're suggesting basically we pass the, you know, to have the bride say, hey, can you please talk to the venue and make sure so we can do this and do this, the best for both of you, uh, because we have to balance that out. And it's probably a good advice and the best way to do it is just at that 11th hour when some of these rules may be coming down or changing. It's going to be tough. Um, we got we to gotta smile and, and try to be as, as uh, courteous and, and such as possible. Yeah, because their world is upside down. I mean, yeah. I could just kind of imagine. Yeah, you know, here you've spent how much money and getting prepared and planning for years, and then all of a sudden, the week beforehand, you find out that you can't do. Oh, it's, yeah, it's brutal. And like I said, that my July brides who moved from March, I'm so concerned about. They may not want to move it again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the the whole thing that is just, the whole world world is turned upside down. So let's talk about about music. So our most of them again are are going to be. Banning dancing, frowning upon dancing, you know, that whatever. Um, some have gone as far as to say they don't want dancing at the table, they don't want a dance floor, and they don't want dancing, you know, anywhere. Let's talk to music. Um, how would you change your music play for the day? Um, probably a little bit more low key. Um, talk to the bride and groom, find out what their some of their favorite artists are, low key artists. Um, I know in Iowa, uh, here in, in Iowa, that we have a lot of country people. And um, yeah, Huey Lewis in the News is awesome. Yes. No album back there. Um, some more Power of Love, some sing-along songs. Um, there's been some great videos on people doing getting getting crowd interaction with sing-along songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been some people, uh, I think you had uh, one recently that was all sing-along songs. Yep. Yep. Um, they, did, they recorded that actually last night, which we'll be uh, getting that up, uh, getting that up uh, probably tomorrow or the day after. And, you know, you get the crowd interaction. I know sometimes I've done like the 500 miles from the proclaimers, like, okay, this side, da, 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 and then this side over here, da, 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 you know, and kind of, and like I said, just, just kind of getting some interaction that way um, and some fun action, some, some interaction. I think, I think that uh, getting people involved and have, helping them have fun at their tables is going to be yep. our, our goal. And, you know, and when, when we do shows uh, talking with Brian Red and we talk about creating the soundtrack for the event, I don't think there's ever been a time that this is this is more apropos than right now that we're going to be doing this. Even though if we have this conversation with brides right now, they're not going to want to talk about this. Is in the back of our head, we know that in four to six weeks, this might be the reality that we have to uh, we have to be talking about and thinking about. So, playing, as you said, low key. Uh, my concern with us playing, you know, some of our favorites. You know, we're playing the the traditional songs you do at weddings because you know oh hey you know can we play the cupid shuffle you know no one's no one's watching can we play that my concern is if something if the venue is responsible and if we do something that's going to encourage dancing and the venue gets in trouble because of it not only have we just tarnished the venue because if somebody takes a picture puts it up on social media look at they had dancing going on at the elks lodge last friday night oh ho, ho, that can't happen these things get around. So yep. if we are that bad guy who plays a song that encourages dancing, we could have the venue in trouble. We could have it where some, you know, somebody was out there on the dance floor dancing and they catch the bug and now they turn around. This is what some attorneys are, are uh, looking at is, is who can we sue to uh, because of, of uh, a, a, an infection. There are attorneys looking, looking for this case. I've got some friends who have talked about this and they're like, yes, there are some, this is like DJs talk about DJ things, attorney talks about attorney things, and some of them are discussing this. 
it's going to be there. This is why the politicians have been trying to pass rules that that businesses can't be sued for their from their employees because of a COVID infection and why businesses can't be sued by customers because of COVID infections this is because of this exact thing. And if you think this is all blowing out of proportion, check out uh, some of the news uh, things coming out of um, some of the Republican um, proposals to the, uh, the last uh, uh, Democratic uh, bill that went through. This was proposed by a few uh, Republicans wanting to see that type of language added uh, to protect businesses. Lots of different aspects of it, and we have to think about that music, that our music to a point could not only get us in trouble, could get the venue in trouble in a way that we would never, never think about. So definitely, definitely be there. Um, okay, so we're creating that soundtrack, um, not playing the dance, danceable music. My question becomes is, who do we cater to? And, and I, this is the one I've been kind of hemming and hawing myself, is, you know, we always think about, okay, we've got the multiple ages in the room, and we've got all these different things. And we know that the the formula is if we can get the, the ladies to dance, generally we can then get the guys to dance. How does that change once we start playing, you know, creating that soundtrack for the room as opposed to uh, aiming for a dance floor? Oh, man. Um, I, I, I would, uh, you're almost catering to everybody. Um, after you find out the bride and groom, if they, if, if when you're talking to your bride and groom and, and I always go through what's, you know, we always, we use DJ event planner, phenomenal web, uh, software, mm -hmm. and we ask for their playlist and we also ask for the do not playlist. So it's always, in, make sure you, you kind of, and from that, you kind of guess what kind of genre me too. I'm like, is there any artists you don't want to hear? So if I'm taking song requests from the crowd, I'm going to know if I, if, if they don't like Taylor Swift, or ta uh, mm -hmm. Taylor Swift or Justin Bieber. So I know not, I stay away from those. But I guess you maybe open up your day, uh, open up your, your night to look, take a request, text me. There's that new that new software. Text me that uh, you know, song request. Mm -hmm. um, that way it's your social distancing, and uh, you're getting song requests, and that way they don't have to come up, and, and you don't, you don't have to um, potentially you, know, you can social distance with the with the texting. Yeah, I think that's and that that actually, uh, Brandon's Brandon should have that. Uh, I think he's aiming for a June first release. Right in time. Yeah, right in time. He, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, the ability to have a, a QR code up on your on your your uh, near you up on the you know or on the tables where folks can scan it with their phone. They can s then scan it. They can type in a request. It goes right to your uh, your event uh, that you're that you're doing, so that they can make requests and send shout outs and different things to you. With basically, you know, it's a a two step process. It's a click. Type, well, three dot and send. Click type. three parts, three, 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 three. Yeah, three. I can't count very well, but anyway. So you guys will hear more about that. Uh, he's he. Uh, is, I think this weekend he wants to do um, like this later this week. He wants to do some major beta testing um, for d actual DJs instead of uh, he's been having all of his his techie uh, programmer friends stress test it. <laughs> So well, those are good guys. To oh, try they're, to they're, great, they're great guys, but they're the ones who then design a, a system to go. And instead of making, you know, 50 to a hundred requests that you may get on a really busy night, they're trying to run 10 to 20,000 requests through it in 20 minutes or whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. We don't want that. Yeah. That, but that's, they're testing it. So anyway, yeah. we guys will hear more we about that. We want to that. throttle it down as much as possible. Um, so that will be, it will be coming out. So, so music wise, I might thought with that of who they really care to is, is I would be looking at something that I want to be able to have it where a lot of the songs are maybe not quite sing along, but the high recognition where the parents are going to know the song and the kids might remember mom and dad singing or, or engaging with that song. You know, if there would be another Guardians of the Galaxy uh, come out, you know, there's a fabulous example, you know, something that's that's covering the songs that are there. The kids know it because of the movie. The the parents know it and the grandparents know it type of thing. You know, we've covered, we can cover three bases really quickly with that. Um, I think those are going to be the types of songs that when we can do some of those and mixing in, um, you know, maybe a, a touch of uh, newer things, but yet something that's highly recognizable for the parents. Um, it's going to, it'll be a completely different world in that way, but I think we can, it'll open our music uh, library up a little bit because we're going to be looking for those hidden gems where people are like, I remember this song. This was, yep. this was, you know, when I was in school kids, this was the song that this is the first song that, you know, I, I, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I think that's going to open up the, the op opportunity uh, for that. So, um, uh, 
like, oh gosh, we got to, I, I, I didn't realize that. It, <laughs> I didn't realize that it scrolled. <laughs> they could, they comments. Oh. Uh, ta -da -da. the feed. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys are, that is the, the link I just put in is the, uh, I just put it in again. Cause, uh, some of the Facebook, uh, no, it must be YouTube. The YouTube, uh, is disconnected. Yeah. My YouTube disconnected too. So, um, so that's why I had to, I, it crashed, uh, cra crash Chrome. So they must've had that too. Uh, table games, uh, would, would a person recommend? Oh, there's, there's, there's so many, so many games, um, that could be, I think that this is something I would, I would probably spend some time talking to the couple to find out a little bit, maybe about what some of the things they're interested in. It's, it's just that we're not going to be able to, to follow the lines of the recommendations from the, the authorities. We're not going to get you know people up as a group to go all up there and, and serenade the bride and groom in front of their head table. Those kind of things are going to be uh, frowned upon. Something that you know, they can do, have some fun with, um, not maybe touching. You know, we used to have the dollar bill and hand the dollar bill around a table. You're probably not going to do things like that. Um, the napkin thing, you know, not that. Uh, my my favorite one that I think we can still do is the one where we take the fork and everybody licks the fork because they hand it around. I think that one will go. Uh, that one will go. That'll go. That one will go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so there's there's going to be some things that can be done. And I think that, you know, the things based around the couple trivia, um, there might be some some game um, game things they like. Or that bingo, if you have a, a projector and a screen, and you can be giving, you know, everyone gets a bingo scorecard and they can, you put things up on the screen that are favorite things of the bride and groom. You know, you can have some fun with it and, uh, and, and get the guests involved so they can all laugh and they can all be part of the joke. That's probably the biggest thing I would recommend is that when you're doing games at weddings, it's too easy to do things that are an inside joke for just the immediate family or the wedding party. And then it's no fun for the, the entire crowd. You've got to really be cognizant of, of making sure everybody gets the joke. Because inside yep. jokes, well, are funny for some people. For most people, they're like, oh, I don't understand. Why was that funny? I don't I don't get it. And we've all been yeah. in that room. Uh, one thing I got from Randy Bartlett, and uh, I've done this at weddings, and it's not even COVID weddings, um, is a color. When you have kids at your event, I'm doing a coloring contest mm -hmm. for the, you know, color, uh, you know, draw a picture of the bride and groom. And then uh, you maybe have some candy there for the side. And then uh, have everybody bring their, you know, crayons up and, and, their, and their pictures of the bride and groom that the little kids have drawn. And then, you know, they, everybody's a winner. So everybody gets candy. Um, and I usually use, use Hershey kisses. And at that point in time, we usually do a candy toss. Uh, but like I said, once again, because of COVID probably won't do the candy toss, but um, just drawing pictures of the bride and groom for the, for the, for the kids to keep their interact them active as well, or in, in to in, engage because everybody knows a, a bored kid at a reception can wreak havoc um, with nothing to do. Um, and so like I said, maybe, maybe involve kids in, in a coloring contest of the bride and groom. Okay. So let's take that idea. Let's do it for adults. Let's have the adults do a coloring contest where they do that too. their favorite picture. They can do a picture of the bride and groom. And we're going to give out two prizes. We're going to give out the prize for the one that looks the absolute best. And we're going to give a second prize for the one that's the most creative. And yes. go. And maybe have yeah. a, have a, a $20 star, two $20 Starbucks gift cards or something, or, you know, whatever the bride and groom are into, if they're, you know, into Olive Garden or if they're into, you know, whatever. Don't or if get, you're at a winery, a winery, <laughs> get a bottle yeah, of wine exactly. from the, yeah, get a bottle of wine from the winery. But just to have something again, so people are laughing and they're having some fun. Not everyone's going to draw, but you know what? One or two people at each table will probably grab the color crayons and, and they would go and, and create something. And the, of course the creative ones are the ones that would be the most fun. So, and, and I think these are, these are timeline things where, where you got to give them time to draw. So maybe, um, during cake service, you know what I'm saying? Okay. We're gonna do a coloring contest mm -hmm. or, you know, when you're, when you're looking for those words of wisdom or you're looking for, uh, you know, memories of the bride and groom and, and guessing who that would almost be like a dinner thing. Um, and then you can pull it out later, but you want to give them time to be able to think about it, work on it. Um, so it's also gonna be a timeline thing. And at what time of the evening do you want to do this? And so, so you make sure your timeline's pretty tight. Um, let's see. Uh, I can't see any, any, no, there's the chats and we've, we're, some other people had YouTube, uh, YouTube crashing them. For those of you watching on Facebook now, because you left YouTube, there's still, we have about, um, uh, we have about, I think 17, they're coming back now on, on YouTube. Um, I had to literally restart Chrome. It crashed, uh, it, it froze up and I had to restart Chrome. Um, uh, all oh, right. Yeah. Have have one table uh, with the the uh, requesting music. Uh, they can they could request a song for a different table in the room. 
Now that, yes. that could be interesting. Yes. That could be interesting because in order to really do this, we would have to, and I think this could be a fun, is that they could request a song, but they would have to have numbers on the table. That yeah. table five is requesting this song going out to table one, and you know, and they could have some. That could be that could be some fun there. Uh, love Robert. it, love it. Like like that idea. Um, Mad Libs, yes, Mad Libs. Any any of these types of games uh, could could have uh, have some 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 fun. Um, one one. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious, Pictionary. Yep. One couple was into Pictionary, and what uh, the the way the game was is that the brides. Uh, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen were uh, against each other, but the guests were the ones who had to guess what the picture was. So a bridesmaid, she drew her card. She went up to uh, an old overhead, you know, the old the old uh, one where they put the, the film down and they could write on it with a marker, and it went up onto the wall. She was on the old overhead, and she had to draw, and she had, you know, the 60 seconds for the guest to guess these, uh, guess her thing. And after the bridesmaids, you know, it was a bridesmaid, groomsman, and after the end, you know, whichever had the most, uh, the, they won. And oh my gosh, it was a hoot because some of the groomsmen were just absolutely horrible <laughs> at this, and yet they won. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and yet they won. So there's there's just there's ways to do some things that would give us that social distancing and give them that fun that fun memory. Um, ta -da -da. So our, our 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 voice may not be linked up. Un unfortunately, sometimes when there's when there has has been some uh, some problems with YouTube and such, we've had that. Oh, I hate when that happens. I, I can feel for him. Yeah, and and as I'm looking at as I'm looking at the video that's going out, the video that's going out is right on. So somewhere between us and um, and and the YouTube world is is we have that. So I, I apologize. I wish we could fix that. I wish I knew how what causes that. Um, it's just an unfortunate reality that streaming sometimes audio and the video don't line up for us, which is frustrating. Okay, end of the night. We've we've kind of we've done some things. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a time frame. Is that they got married at four o'clock at the church? They came over. They had they had five o'clock. They had a, a very little social time. They were eating by five thirty because they can't mingle. They have to come in, sit down, and uh, literally go into eat. So we're eating at 5.30, and then we finish up with the meal at, uh, and we do, you know, a couple of activities. We do a cake at 6.30. Um, we're, we're getting a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of activities. We're ready to pretty much wrap up somewhere between 7 o'clock, around that 7 o'clock time frame. I don't see us going, without a dance floor, I don't see us going much beyond uh, 7 o'clock. Um, how do we end an event like this? Whew. Any it, suggestions it, in that chat room? <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and for those of you out there too, I mean, this is this is a, we're at a real thing. I mean, a traditional, yeah, we would have done a circle, uh, you know, maybe yep. a circle of of love, and getting everyone in a circle, and you know, hey, everyone who's in a circle, it's one more year, wishing them one more year of happily married life together. It's yeah, I don't. I don't know. And a lot, yeah, we're all spitballing. I mean, man, yeah. I'd be, I'm up for anybody. How do yeah, exactly. So we're we're kind of thinking thinking out loud here. Um, as I as I've again was looking at traditionally what or some of the things we've done is you know there has been the the um, uh, sparkler yeah. that people leave with the sparkler. Um, I, I I guess what I'm kind of envisioning is a grand send off of the guests again because they're going to have to be somewhat by their tables. They can't they can't be there. And we did a first dance, and I think that I'm going to rec recommend to my couples they do a last dance, where ah. we're going to have them do a last dance. And ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Bobby and Susie, and then they basically do a uh, an exit out of the out of the room. I like that. I can't really think of a much different way to do this. Because again, no. we they're congregating inside that building, which is responsibility of the venue. They can't do that there. Um, I, I just I don't know uh, you know how else a person could. Uh, that could be emotional. That could be that could be an, like an emotional. Maybe I, and I know we're getting into different skill sets and levels, but maybe we could do some voiceovers. Um, That'd be a great spot for it. Wow, yeah, yeah, with with some uh, voiceovers from mom, dad, maybe grandma and grandpa. Uh, and their last song is a surprise. When you catch some things there or during the toast, what have you. Um, yeah, you'd be able to do some. <laughs> or, yeah, everyone go out to their cars and have them line up, line up on the road and 
flashing the hazards and honking the horns as they walk through. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I like that. That's, that's, that's yeah. That is funny. Last dance into uh yeah they, they go out to the parking lot and everybody honk, they line up and honk their horns yeah that'd be cool too yeah that's that's true a person could send everybody out to the parking lot okay get everyone that lined up out there and then uh, you know they hit the door and and instead of a sparkler exit it's a uh, hazard light exit yeah. <laughs> honking yeah that's great whoever came up with that I, mean, yeah. I don't get to see the I, don't, I can't see the list but that's that was a good yeah, idea that was as well. good. Robert had that one Robert uh, Meadows uh, Jr. there so excellent. Um, yeah, the dance floor, um, we're, social distancing on a dance floor. There was one, uh, one DJ, I think I saw talking about that, uh, today and they were trying to maintain, uh, maintain that because of, of the recommendation that that's what they do. And they said there was absolutely no way they could do it. Um, I did see one, um, one post of a German club that had opened that had a dance floor and that the DJ played this and they'd had social distancing and you see people on the dance floor, there's you know 20 people on the dance floor, six to eight feet apart, all wearing a mask. And it's like, yeah, that's not gonna fly in the United States. <laughs> there's yeah. no way that that's gonna fly here. <laughs> but, oh yeah, that's yeah. But yeah, I, I, that's why I don't think we're gonna see dance floors for a while is because it's just not possible. And, and none of us want to be the bad guy to say, you gotta, Separate. I mean, it was bad enough when we had to make the announcement about, uh, you know, not having drinks on the dance floor. That would be a really tough one. So, well, Kevin, our time tonight has uh, wound down already. We are at the end How of the show. Fast. Yeah, I did go really, really fast. Uh, thank you guys for being with us tonight and sharing some great ideas uh, in the in the chat room. There were some fabulous ideas. Uh, if you didn't get to see all the chats, I apologize. I tried to to read the questions. I missed a few of them, and I, I again apologize for that. Uh, it's one of those things that you want to come in and join and catch these live because when we're doing them live, there's people asking and, and doing different things and giving some suggestions that we don't get a hit, and you can learn a lot from uh, just watching the chat rooms at times with the show. So, oh, yeah. Once again, Kemi, thank you, my friend. And uh, thank you, John. We'll catch you guys in about 10 minutes. We've got Ben still coming up. And we're going to talk about a document that he's helping to work on, talking about the guides for opening up on different events coming up here this summer. Thanks, everybody. Uh -huh.